from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Library of Congress. I'm John Cole. I'm the director of the Center for the Book in the Library of Congress. Uh, the Center is the library's reading promotion arm. Our job is to do what we can to stimulate public interest in books, reading, literacy, and libraries. We do it in a number of ways, both across the nation through affiliated state centers for the book and nonprofit reading organization partners that help us in projects. We also are uh, deeply involved in the National Book Festival. The library just celebrated its 10th National Book Festival, and we already have a date for next year, so we are in business. So mark September the 24th. Uh, here at the Library of Congress, we have a specialty in presentations such as this about new books that are of special interest to the Library of Congress, either to curators or to a custodial division, or authors who have used the collections of the Library of Congress, and sometimes books that result from special projects in a division of the Library of Congress. One of our objects here, of course, is to show that all of the reading promotion labor that not only we're involved in, but many of our partners and many of the divisions of the Library of Congress are involved in, result in books, real books that are important for our culture and real projects that have been a good, have been part of the Library of Congress's program. Uh, these Books and Beyond talks are all uh, videotaped for later presentation on the libraries and the Center for the Books uh, website, read.gov. Uh, for that reason, we ask that all electronic devices uh, be put away, at least for the presentation and for the hour. Uh, we have a sp special program which will involve a panel discussion and also then a book sale um, at the end of the uh, presentation. And the book which is we're concentrating on today actually is on sale for a very special price. So when you consider whether or not to purchase it, uh, we can tell you that this $85 book is on sale today only at the Library of Congress for $60. Uh, the Center for the Book has a schedule of its future events out on the table in the back. Also, uh, you can find us and our, pro our books on Facebook. We have discussions of our past books, uh, comments about future programs, and we're very pleased to have all of you here today. We have two co-sponsors for today's event. Almost everything we do involves co-sponsors. One uh, is the Prints and Photographs Division, which has been a sponsor of a number of programs through the years, and I wish to thank the division, and in particular, Verna Curtis, a curator of photography who is going to be introducing our program. And we're also pleased to have a special connection with the Italian Embassy today, along with uh, the publisher, Aperture Foundation, of this marvelous book. To get us started, I'm pleased to introduce Verna, who will introduce the program itself and take over right now. Let's give Verna a hand. Thank you, John, and welcome to everybody. I am especially delighted, personally delighted, to introduce our three uh, speakers today. I'll start with Denise Wolf, uh, who is pursuing a distinguished uh, career as a book editor. She currently is with Aperture Foundation, a nonprofit organization in New York dedicated to advancing photography. She formerly was commissioning editor for photography books at Fiden in London. Uh, recent book projects that she's been involved with uh, involved Danny Lyon, uh, Bill Christenberry, a Washington photographer and artist, and also John Gossage, whose uh, book is coming out soon, and an exhibition will be at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in a few days. Um, next to her is Renato Miracco, uh, the cultural attaché at the Italian Embassy, 
and formerly director of the Italian Cultural Institute in New York. He has been the advisor for Italian art at the Tate Modern in London and has curated uh, over 72 exhibitions of Italian art worldwide. Uh, most recently was the Giorgio Mirandi exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Today's special guest is Paolo Ventura. Uh, he is an internationally renowned artist. And he comes to us from Italy <laughs> today. Um, we are so pleased to have him here. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I opened my New York Times uh, Sunday paper in August to find one of his photographs on the cover of the book review section. And uh, he occasionally accepts commissions like that to do work of a more commercial nature, but I'd say that he always calls his own shots. Uh, he was born in Milan and grew up in a family of painters and illustrators. His father uh, is an illustrator of children's books, his twin brother uh, an artist painter. Um, I thought that it would be very nice to introduce what the panel is going to discuss, and that is Paolo's work, by telling you a little bit about his <clears throat> art. We are very fortunate here, and this program coincides with several celebrations, one of which is Paolo's gift of two of his original albums to the Library of Congress. They contain original Polaroid photographs, which will be on view after this talk at a table outside this uh, auditorium. Um, and Denise and I are working on a book on albums from the Library of Congress, photographic albums that come from all over the library. And Paolo's work is, is uh, in that book as well. So those celebrations, I think, are especially pertinent to this discussion. But Paolo started working on the type of thing you'll hear more about uh, on the subject of war. And it was because of his personal experience that he began this. And he has written about what was in the New York Times book review, which was an illustration for two books that were being reviewed about the Nazi era in Europe. And he uh, has said this about those. Every June, after the school year was over, my brother and I would leave Milan for our vacation at the seaside with my grandmother. Our train departed from Binario 21 at the Milan Central train station. Mounted on the wall at the beginning of the track was a plaque. This plaque was dedicated to the Jewish Italian citizens who were transported from Milan to Auschwitz on January 30th, 1944, on a train that departed from that very track. The plaque read, and I paraphrase, I'm quoting him, at dawn on a foggy winter Sunday morning, more than 600 Jewish Italian citizens crossed the empty city of Milan to arrive at Binario 21, where they were loaded onto a train that carried them to Auschwitz. He writes, he continues, every time I saw this plaque, I was struck by it and this tale that it told. The image of these people walking through a foggy, empty city belongings in hand with the idea that they would need their things where they were going always stayed in my mind. This was the start of our trip to the seaside and the spark that started my grandmother sharing her countless stories about her experiences during the war as a young mother of three. With the sensation of these stories in mind, many years later, I started to work on my first project, War Souvenir. And I hand the program over to our guests. Paolo, did you see the movie? Uh, no. No, really? No. I, I saw the movie. It was really touching, really touching. So I, I'll, give you, I'll give you just a copy this night. Um, first question, Paolo. Yeah. What about you? If you can describe yourself about in 10 seconds, what, um. 10 seconds, what do you have to say? 
10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yes. Uh, it's yeah, too much. Right. 10 seconds is too much. <laughs> okay, great. 10 seconds is too much. <laughs> well, just to break. I, I'm a photographer and I work many years uh, for. Well, first, I want to say thank you to the Library of Congress for organizing this event. Uh, I worked more than 10 years as a fashion photographer, and um, um, at one point in my career, I decided that uh, I want to change something. And uh, as Averna mentioned, uh, my first work, my first private work that I started doing uh, around six, seven years ago um, was uh, the war souvenir. That was the memory, the story that my grandmother told me for years and years about her experience in, during the war um, in Milano during the occupation of the, of the Germans. And f that was kind of like the seed that she put on me to start working on the idea of recreate the, um, that kind of time uh, on my table. So what, I, what I'm doing, I create a set. Uh, I, I built a set, small set uh, on my table uh, this, uh, this is the, pro the winter story project, actually, uh, but it's the same, uh, same idea, same uh, concept. And uh, um, I start with the, my grandmother's story uh, because I thought it was build already a f an invented word, a fake word. It was difficult to me, and so base uh, that on the real story that my mother told me. There was kind of make help me to fill the space, which actually empty because of two tables in my studio. Um, after that project, I, I realized that I was able to do something yeah. good enough for me and to be photographs and, uh, and that people can believe that was true and not fake, which is not what I want to do. I was not really interested in miniature, but that's the only way that I can shape this idea that I have in my mind. Uh, I couldn't make drawing or, or paintings or sculpture, but that was the idea to take photographs. So once this, this set is done, I take a picture, and what I want to do, I want to do so look like something real. Uh, so when I realized that I can do that, I start to think of what I really want to do it. So that's so the first work was kind of like um, uh, try to see if you can do it. And then uh, following my, my grandmother's story, um, then I did Winter Story, which is completely fantastic and, uh, and, and, uh, and not based on any real things, real fact. Yeah. Can Ma you tell us a little bit about yeah. Winter Story? Yeah, Winter Story, it's, uh, uh, what I said, it's not based on any real fact, uh, uh, but it's more based on my, my, my childhood, basically. With, uh, growing up with my, we, me and my, I have twin brothers, and we both grew up with me, my grandmother, and um, um, but my parents was working, so we, we are twins, so my my parents call my grandmother and say, you can't visit, uh, live with us <laughs> because, uh, you know, and then we have another brother, his older brother, so they say two twins, we can't do it. So <laughs> my grandmother took care of us all the time. And she, um, she was a kind of strange person, odd person, I would say. Uh, very nice, I love her a lot. And uh, um, she was, uh, um, she was came, coming from Veneto, from Belluno, which is a, a small town on the north of Italy. And she came in the, 19, in the 20s to Milano. She had uh, this very, she, uh, she was a part of this huge community, uh, a big community of uh, people from Belluna. They were living in Milano. They called the Bellunesi in, in Milano. And they all speak in this dialect. It's, uh, it's she, the Belluna is in the mountain, it's uh, in the Dolomiti mountain. So they speak this very thick accent, uh, this, this, uh, this dialect, which is really difficult to understand. So we used <laughs> to do it all the time. She, to, she, she liked to go out to the house. So we, with her, we're going with her to visit all these Paisan from, from Belluno, and uh, uh, mostly were dormen in the house in the center of Milano, because that was a typical work from people from, uh, from Veneto. Um, so we got to see this, and, this old, and uh, she was taking care of all these people's dying from the, from the community. So we, all, all these men, I remember, is always going to see this widow, of the, the man, the husband die, and they bring to home, or they die home, and with my grandma, they used to, uh, her work was to dress up these people, and stay there, and um, so I remember it put us, me and my brother, in the in the living room, and then <laughs> stay in the bedroom when there <laughs> yeah. was the, the cutting to be prepared. Yeah. But me and my brother, you want to see this because you know you're a kid, you want to see what is in this room. They're always closed, and they always open quickly and leave. So we, I remember to try to look inside and always see this this kind of scene that um, even uh, you see these these shoes coming up from the from the from the bed. 
So, and then we, we like, I mean, she likes circus a lot. So we going to see circus and uh, all the time, all the time. Above all in the winter, actually. I, I think it was a tradition for small circles and big circles to come to, to Milano, the big city in the winter for Christmas. Um, but uh, we used to go to s in this area. We used, we, we, she liked to take a trolley. So we took a trolley and then we crossed the city and we go to this place outside Milano where there was a small circus. Uh, it was a small, poor circus. I remember there were very few animals. And um, uh, they used to put uh, the circus in this place outside the city. It's, I was outside the city, but was not really outside. So you need to walk a little bit also through fields, a little for arrive. And uh, um, they were, I, I, mean, I like it when I was a kid, probably they were really sad and poor, but um, um, they used to have uh, like a donkey, a um, uh, couple horses, and uh, um, some, some cow maybe also. <laughs> and uh, I, I would, I, I, yeah, we said yesterday, probably it's all animal, like in case of like the rough time, they can be eaten. You know? <laughs> And cook. So yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was it not was strange. Uh, <laughs> but they were beautiful. They were beautiful circus. They were, um, they were simple. And uh, they were still, I think, when I remember, um, there was still something come from the past that they disappear late in the 70s. Um, that kind of things replaces from other form of entertainment. You know? It, uh, yeah. Well, no. C can I go back yeah. just a little while? And, and sorry, I would like to, to know about your father. This is from your mother's side. What, what about your father's side? Because it's really important, like according to me, it's really important just to, to have <coughs> the other part of your <laughs> education. Yeah, but from my, my father was a uh, children book author. So, so, yeah, so well, he, we grew up with, uh, with, with my, children. see my father, they were the drawing, the oh, children book author, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we grew up looking at him uh, working on his, yeah. on his books. And so, so the feeling of the family will be about creating a yeah, fantasy yeah, and imagination. Yeah, and even so if a, this is yeah, even if it's the, the creative was my father, was making this, he was pretty successful in the 70s making these books. But for me, the more creative person there was my grandmother which it was nothing to do with anything creative, really, you know? From mother's side or father? From mother's side, mother's side. Mother side, yeah, yeah. Because I think she was a free spirit, in a way. She was, was an odd person. So in her, she was a very simple person. She was a, not going to school. So, but she had this freedom in her head that I always later thought about. And uh, um, so as a kid, as a young kid, that... Maybe you, they gave me a lot of, of a lot of. Uh, it was really important to stay with her, spend such a big time with her, doing strange things. Thinking <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but <laughs> like. so we can, uh, so yeah, we can really curious about that. crazy <laughs> or you start to wor work with your imagination. And so when I start to after winter, st after a war souvenir, I start thinking that. Uh, I, for a long time, I, I have an what email. So when it was your first work? Yeah, that was my first work. After based. fashion work? Well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that <laughs> when okay. I stopped so doing fashion uh, photograph, I thought, I, I think that there was time to do something else. And I have images in my mind that I want to do it. Um, and uh, so... And the I, first work was about your grandmother's stories? Yeah, my grandmother's story. So and no, the, no, and, and the, 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 Italy, the war in, in Italy during the occupation of... Um, of Italy. Um, it was based on my mother's story, my grandmother's story, my father's story, and you know, on my family story, uh, reinvented, of, of course. I don't, I don't make any specific event. Uh, it was yeah. more like the feeling that uh, I get through the story on that time. Give you know, us some example about the first you were. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I think the story that, I, I, I think that I'm the last generation that hear the story of the war directly from adult people. Uh, like my father was a teenager and my grandmother was an adult. My mother was a teenager too. Uh, and I, 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 I this, the, the story of the war time was a kind of like obsessive in my family, probably for many sure. Italians family, sure. even probably for you too. And uh, they're always the same story, you know? The, I think most of the people don't even take part, talking about women, men they were in the front line, prisoner right. in different place, but women, they were just, everyday life was talking about looking for food, uh, which it was not a lot. I uh, tried to survive, exactly, in the, and uh, so, and the Milano was bombed, 
And I remember her story that uh, there was uh, these uh, neighbors in uh, in living the same uh, in the same uh, uh, apartment building. And she was a very good friend with her. And her husband was a fascist. So when this, the 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 war was almost over, they put it both and they sent to the jail as the as a fascist. When yeah, right. the, the fascists fell up, fell down. And my grandmother used to bring uh, um, food to these people in the prison because she was don't care. They were fascists. It was a friend of her. And my grand grandfather, he was very upset because he don't want it because of course that was like very. So they always the same kind of story. The, uh, and what I try to do to do it, it's uh, um, recreate that kind of feeling of sadness, uh, uh, angry, and uh, uh, cold, and, and more than specific fat. So it, it's, it's more about Milano uh, and around Milano at that time. I don't want to be historically perfectly correct, you know? Uh, Just coming back to these for a second. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about how they are real and how these painted yeah. surfaces yeah. work? Well, they. I have this big table in my studio. It's a two. I mean, it's not that big actually. The two <laughs> table like this one, and uh, I use cardboard, wood, or plastic, or any object I can I can use for make uh, my 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 set. And uh, what I try to do because I wanted the set to be very, I mean, to be very real. So you think that you see something that uh, uh, exi a place that exists for real. Uh, uh, and uh, so I always try to put something. Painted or clearly not real. I mean, like just to be. Yeah, just for like emphasize the fact of real. Because I think, for example, this uh, this little little sky painted with the moon and the stars, and then that's clearly a, a backdrop that was painted. So you, then you think that the rest of the scene is real. Uh, real, yeah. Right. When uh, it's so, I it, uh, create this ambiguity with the uh, with the. So it's often in my uh, the same same story with this one. Also, they help me to. Um, what I like also, the circus is always something painted. It was, everything was made inside the circus. All the insignia, everything was made by them. So they give it, they help me to, to, to weigh, to create this second illusion, mm -hmm. but also make something more fantastic. Oh, this is, was something very popular in the park in, uh, where I grew up. Yeah, right. And they disappeared yeah. suddenly at yeah, uh, yeah, uh, one sure. point. Yeah, yeah. And then was still coming when the fly or drive a car was yeah. kind of like a, uh, something and very few people can do it. So people, this was like this painted backdrop in a, yeah. in a park. You put your face on. Yeah, and you put a face, you stay behind, and the photographer takes your picture, and then stay. they give you a copy. Yeah, yeah, okay. And yes. of course, they, you, you fly. And uh, <laughs> you fly. <laughs> and the, the, the do you have any of you? <laughs> no, uh, my father never wanted. My grandmother didn't like it, and so we me always too. sit and look at <laughs> the too. other kids yeah. taking picture, yeah. but we never did it. <laughs> yes, <me too>. So <laughs> same for me too. <laughs> uh, this is the insignia of the tallest Italian woman fell during the uh, uh, storm. Um, well, this is going along with the same things, you know, put something clearly fake in the set help me to make the set real, even if it's not. And why do you use photography? Like, what is it? I use photography because I think that if you see a photograph, you believe uh, that that's real. It's a simple base uh, uh, thing. Uh, when the drawing or paintings, you know that they're not real, or like you, maybe you interpret yeah. it more when they want to be. I want to really. I did it for myself. I would like to be in those places, so I do it for my for myself. And taking a picture, it's. I think that I was there and I took a picture. Uh, I would like to know. I would like to just to describe it. I would like to know um, how you can create the set. Yeah. Uh, so you have you, you have. You have just an empty table, starting yeah. for the, the empty table and an idea. Yeah, yeah exactly. you have an idea in your yeah. mind and yeah, yeah, yeah. You, a dream or an mm -hmm. idea. Just because it's really important, probably that you you would like to. Uh, I, I I quote you. <laughs> I would like to create create and probably create feelings. No, do you know what I mm -hmm. mean? So uh, I would like to create feeling. How you create feelings? So with an, an empty table, because now we have to discover. Com coming back. I would like to, to, to see the, the, the difference between the drawings and, 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 and the mm -hmm. final okay. work. Yeah. Empty table, 
an idea and then well it's then. difficult for me because uh, it's just for a probably for a painter or for like a writer when you have like something empty in front of you you need yeah. to fill so to me when i have an idea then help, what i'm doing usually it's start to sketch the idea on a paper um so they help me then to to this put this object in space and say okay that's that would be a person that would be the backdrop here they would, they would know so when i i do the sketch and then i start making the the set and and that's make my work very no so cheap, empty table cheap. sketch first yes I'm yeah so well, yeah why, why do you decide just to to change your sketch because coming back for to the final photograph you see you had some trees here you had some yeah because that for me is the base okay when no, i just in, understand. yeah yeah so i mean this i am I, for example this idea of the of this the fire i do you call it fires okay. yeah okay um, I always loved him, and I, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, I remember. I remember I this vision, and I remember that one night, one day, we went to the circus, and it was too early. It was kind of two hours early. We arrived, we <laughs> make some mistakes. <laughs> so, and we don't know what to do, eh? And so we started going around the circus, and there was this uh, man. There was a kind yes. of like try. Yeah. He was working. You know, was uh, yeah, yeah. Um, exact yeah. practicing. Yes. The, 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 and we're like me and my brother, everybody with we the mouth open because it was just, no. And uh, was it something? <laughs> see, of course, it was completely different. Probably, if it see it for real, there was a ira ice. I mean, in a bed built in the back, it was not that romantic. But uh, I remember some, some something magic when we saw. So I want to do that scene, but I want to understand how we can do it for real. I can I can make. So I start to uh, think about. I like to have this painted backdrop with the moon and the stars, and then uh, the fire spitter in the front. Um, Making a sketch helped me to understand if that's enough for the scene. Then when I make the scene, I discover that uh, there's a difference when you draw it, when you photograph something. There's completely different. I mean, there's some difference. So you need to, there's a centered space, which empty on the paper, it's good. Empty in the photographs, they're not good. Yeah, yeah, right. So, of course. Well, then Paolo, I'll also, I, we discovered these because he brought them into the office one day and we figured out that he'd been throwing them out. <laughs> so, I mean, this... That you consider this kind of the start of your work, but not really your work. And it wasn't until we really started looking at them and we thought, oh, it'd be really neat yeah. to include these as part of the book. And then now you're you're not throwing them out, hopefully. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, because for me, they, uh, the drawing that was really only for understand what I can do it on the, for the scene. But I always thought about the scene uh, photograph, not the drawing. The drawing to me was really just sketch and the not important important because then the photographs were different. Um, it's the first step of working. Exactly, exactly. And it's incredible doing the, the drawing. I understand the difference between drawing and photograph, which is, of course, uh, yeah. obviously. But the idea the, the when you're doing this about the same concept, um, drawing something or photograph something, it's really different. Um, for example, in this scene, I try to replace, I try to make a photograph exactly like this. I like the idea of this man lost in the woods. Um, and they look dressed in a strange, like he lost his band. Uh, but also the <laughs> other... <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but another man that was also not very right, you know? So they were kind of like, who is more crazy between us, you know? Um, the rabbit. The, maybe the rabbit. <laughs> I tried to make a photograph, and there was not ever the same feeling. Uh, they would look too much scary. The, 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 the guy with the umbrella would look like a, a killer get <laughs> looking for somebody to kill. So I understand that that was not this correct, that, that was working in, in, in the drawing, not working in the, in the photograph. So I, I put the, the band guy, like lost it, but in an empty street with nobody else. And that was enough. Probably in the drawing, if I make a drawing, just him alone in a street, that was boring. That's, that's what I think, and it's interesting. It would be interesting to, to, to think about how the difference between the two media. It's important probably just to, to talk about the circus. What does it mean, the circus, for you? Only just to remember from your childhood? Or is just uh, uh, some, something more, probably? I, I, re I really don't know yet. Because we are, we are discussing yes, yesterday night, mm -hmm. we, have, we, have, we have just to, to, to say to you, yesterday night we have just a little discussion about circus. So uh, by say no, Rena, no, no, Paolo, don't say a word, but think about <laughs> this, and then probably tomorrow you, you can say to all the people. So what, what is the circus for you? 
it's only a remember or just a, um, a vision in your life? Uh, what about your childhood or what about? Uh, mm, I think like for everybody, circus is something sad when you're a kid. No, I don't, I don't have a, I, I think I have What's a... What's your feelings about no, circus? Sadness. Uh, and sadness, I don't know, no. I don't know, I never really liked the circus, like a show. But you want to go? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, I yeah, used to go a lot <laughs> and I like it, but I never really enjoyed the, 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 the circus himself. I always liked the, 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 the atmosphere. The atmosphere and the, the things outside the circus and behind and uh, just when we're waiting for on the end, uh, um, because uh, I think the, the well, I also like uh, some of the of the of the shows, but the feeling mostly was sad. There was I don't know why it was always rainy when we went to the circus. It was a snow. It was a my bro one of the of us were sick. I don't know. Maybe it was winter. <laughs> so, um, but uh, there was this something timeless there that I always loved. Yeah. The, how people yeah, dress it, uh, the fact that they were they change, be, don't they belong. To, yeah, also the fact that I always thought that they don't belong to us. The people working there, there was some entity coming from uh, who don't who know where. Yeah. And yeah, right. um, so that was really magic, I think. Um, this and something unique. Probably you are addicted to the illusion. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. D yeah. This is the illusion yeah. attracted you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the circus is just an illusion. And so this is belongs to create emotion and feelings because it's just an illusion but you can create just a, a real emotion, a real feelings. But I don't know. Uh, no, I, I think it relates <laughs> to what you're doing as a photographer. You're creating these illusions. Yeah. 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 Circus helped me a lot on that because yeah. it's already yeah. like uh, 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 a fantasy war there where really you have the feeling that these people never you, they, they live like this they they grow up like this they never wearing a different clothes than this uh, uh, 19th 17th century clothes and they they've, it's interesting how the 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 people that work in a circus they're wearing this this uniform that yeah. they're the same from yeah. a couple of centuries, no? Yeah, they never sure. really change. I mean, maybe now it's different. I remember the circus where we used to go. I think they don't exist anymore. It was just a now. little circus, not the huge yeah. circus. Probably. No, there was little. Count but circus. I, yeah, I, I yeah. but this Lettonian circus was very important, yeah. it was big. But I think the ticket was pretty expensive at the time. It was always <coughs> in the center of the city near yeah. the Varesin, I guess. And then there were like other small circus all around the, the, the city in the periphery. And we used to go to the small one. Um, Maybe once we Orfei went to the circus for the yeah, the Dolphe, the yeah, Tony, it, it, that was too big, uh, and they in competition. They yeah, yeah, run. right, right. Uh, they which actually still they exist those circus, yeah. Tony and uh, and Orfe yeah. still exist. But the small one, they were incredible, um, and they were the, the tent was small, and there was all this patch, all this because they were used for like probably hundred years. The same one it was completely faded, from the sun, and uh, there was really this poor animal. They were really sad, uh, like. <laughs> So everything was a little bit crooked, you know, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> so and I remember them when they and you, they put it wood on the on the on the f on the ground so you can walk even a little path you can walk and don't get the dirt because the yeah, poor right. people always put in this middle field and it was rainy and snowing so they put this wood that you can walk and then enter and then it was always cold inside. Um, I mean, it was not that terrible, but. Really so just coming back to the idea of the yeah. illusion and the drawings, um, I wanted you to talk a little bit about how you oh, create the illusion. Yeah, this is my studio. This is actually the photograph that I took for the New York Times about uh, the, um, the, the, the escaping, the, the people that were bring to, to the train. Um, that's so, sorry. What so you... Um, you build the model. Yeah, that's exactly that's uh, what, what I'm doing. I... Um, I making the, the 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 set. I making the houses, the people, everything what I need, uh, and the scale is uh, one ten more or less. Um, as you can see, behind uh, uh, around it, this 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 the set, uh, it's uh, it's it's an apartment. I just focus on what I need. Um, 
I, what I, I, I create a fake illusion. So I, for example, if you have a, like one house here and then another one just behind, the one behind will be much smaller than what it's supposed to be because that yeah. I create a, a fake illusions like the fresco in a church when you have not a lot of space to so make right. this upside that they look like very deep, but it's not. Um, but it's, it's a very simple way to work. It's, it's everything ba made with poor material that you can easily find in any art store. Um, I try to use only very few palette of colors, uh, green, blue, and, uh, and, and, and gray. Um, and it's, it's just about the atmosphere. Uh, I don't think I have a particular... This is uh, in Paolo's yeah. Yeah, studio, nice so you studio. can see where yeah. he's working on uh, yeah. models. <laughs> exactly. So um, I think that I don't have a particular skill of making models. It just, if you know what you want to do, it, then it's easy. But it's important that to, you have a clear in your mind what you want. Like you write a book, so make a painting. It's just important that, oh, that's my son. That, that, that <laughs> <laughs> just to give you an Another idea illusion. of scale. Yeah, it's his scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he likes that. What, uh, what kind of, 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 of machine do you... Do you, do you I use a uh, yeah, yeah. camera. camera. Yeah, I cameras. use a uh, Pentax six by seven, an old. And an old first, you use Polaroid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I make it. Oh yeah, exactly. That's my yeah. Polaroid, and yeah. that's how we can. I take uh, what I'm doing when after making the the sketch. Then uh, from the sketch, I start to build the set, and then when it, I think the set is ready, I start taking Polaroid. Uh, that's the more difficult part to me because yeah. I, I I have something in my mind when I. I think for, for, for a long time of the images, then I start to make the sketch and the build the set. And then well, up, after all this work, I know what I want. And it's pretty frustrating when I don't get what I want. <clears throat> so I start to take Polaroid at the set when it's finished. And uh, that's where I hope it's good. Make this is good, it's good, it should be good. <laughs> and open the Polaroid sometimes like, no. uh, that's the worst because yeah. it's a lot of work wasted. Um, that's what happened in the beginning. Now I'm, I'm better, so <laughs> most of the time, it's, yeah. Um, then I took it a lot of this Polaroid because from that I really start working, uh, and it's about detail. They're probably all the same from the uh, from a quick view, but there are a lot of difference. I remove things, I change, I move, I go up and down. I took a lot, of, like f sometimes f even 30 or 40 Polaroids from the same scene. It's a really tiny difference. Um, and then when I, then when I, the, the Polaroid, when they take a Polaroid, they say, oh, that, this is good. This is exactly, stop moving. Otherwise, it could go forever. forever. Mm -hmm. So I keep the Polaroid in my pocket for a couple of days, one day and a half. Even go to the subway, can put it in my pocket and look at the Polaroid. And if after one day, it's still, I still like it, yeah. that's the photograph. So I'm taking the photograph. So, so then I, I have all this bunch of Polaroids, of hundreds of Polaroids, <laughs> yeah, that I used to put in a, in a, in a, in a shoe, shoe box. Um, and then uh, I start also, so I start put the Polaroid in books because uh, there was a, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I don't want to keep all in a shoebox, they're messed up. And then I start to look at them and there are a lot. And I thought, oh, that'd be fun to do something with this, with this Polaroid and maybe make a book um, with, uh, just for, for myself because when, you, when I work on a project, maybe it take me two or three years to finish the project and to see the result of the work. When for with this album, that will be immediately. And uh, This is one of the albums that is now in the collection here. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, this is uh, the, um, and then you see this white page because I, I used to start a lot of albums. I, uh, if no. I found like albums, I start to put Polaroid. And then because you see my studio, there's a lot of stuff and I lost it. So and then I couldn't find it, so I started a new one. Uh, and then I found the other one. <laughs> so I cut the page and the glue <laughs> <laughs> there. Um, they happened a couple of times, actually. Um, and they w I try to mix works when I'm building this yeah. album. I don't follow the logic of the work. I do, oh yeah, you can see that. Um, <laughs> So it's a part of a photograph that I never shoot because yeah, I, I was right. not like it. Yeah, uh, right, right. All the things I did just from by myself without any intent. Oh, this is the work that I did about the uh, casualty in Civil War. That was a, this is a work that I did uh, um, during the weekend, actually, just for fun and uh, for my pleasure. And I want to recreate these images from uh, uh, 
all the photographers in the Civil War, they took pictures on the battlefield, uh, which always impressed me a lot because it was the first time, I think, where the tattoo have images of a dead soldier in the battlefield. Um, they start during the Crimea War, I guess, uh, but they were battlefield without bodies, um, with phantom. Then in the Civil War, which was the first modern war, you know, with hundreds and hundreds of people die in the, during the battle because they have a modern weapons and the old style of combat. So that's the cause of uh, thousands of people killed. Um, so I make this fake uh, thin types about uh, the Civil War. And there was the idea to do something extremely realistic. So not uh, uh, with any illusion, with any po 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 poet poetry behind, just poetry. a crude yeah. view of war. Yeah, right. Um, so this is, part of, this is another little project that I did um, for, and that put- This belongs to your first works or what? Uh, yeah, there's a different thing that I'm doing okay. and then maybe never became anything or part okay. of another. That was a project called War Criminal that I never finished it. It was commissioned by me to a magazine, to a book actually, but and then I, I lost interest and so I never finished it. What, what, what about Polaroid? Polaroid is just finishing, so what, what, you, what will you do without Polaroid? Oh, yeah. I'm in trouble <laughs> with a Polaroid. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. You know, they stopped producing Polaroid, color Polaroid, but they're still making black and white. Yeah. Which are Now fine. Lady Gaga bought Polaroid, you know? Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> no, oh, she's, good. she's a spokesperson. <laughs> okay, great. Well, somebody, the Polaroid man told me they start making Polaroid again. Yeah. So, but I have enough okay. black and white. She, she bought Polaroid. Good. <laughs> Polaroid. good. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yes, yeah. you're okay. free. You're free. <laughs> That's why. Oh, this is a cover of one of the, my second album. This is the second album that is here at the library, and this one's more specifically for yeah. winter stories. And Polaroid, for me, that's, that's a fundamental part of the work because uh, they, it's, uh, they give me immediately the idea of the, what I want, and then and that I like to put it all together, and you see a little difference when I'm moving. And sometimes I don't understand why I'm changing things because they were better before, but... What makes you choose to put it in the album versus the shoebox? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, because, well, first of all, I can preserve better in an in a album that in a shoebox they start to get round like this and a crack and they, the surface they start to crack in if you don't put it on the album. And I like, I like the album idea. I like the f people make family album. I like the idea with photograph of their own life. Um, and I did with my, my work life. Uh, with the same idea, probably, that people use to do it with this, you know, snapshot that you have in your drawer yeah. in your house. With that freedom, actually, you know, with that freedom to do something for only for yourself. And yeah, right. Which is always the best audience, you know, I think, sometime. This is just to show, uh, we just told you all about the process, so I just wanted to show some of the finished works. Yeah. Again. Oh, from Winter Story. Yeah. yeah. A real book? A re oh, no. All oh, fake. they're tiny. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everything yeah. is fake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, huge. But the real, the real book, I mean, the real, mm, I choose like book I like it, put it there. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's a little thing that you do for yourself. It's <laughs> the little solitude. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 My, yeah. Yeah. That's the size of the final work. Uh, it's, uh, the, 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 the print that I'm making after taking the picture is pretty quite big. Which is the size of? Uh, it's a f uh, 40 by 50, more or less. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Get the cover off. Yeah. <laughs> you never know who you're going to run into in the circus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange circus. It's yeah. <laughs> With the bird. <laughs> I also try in this project to don't uh, have any... It's based on... A, it's a kind of timeless time. Uh, it's, uh, it's a set in it, in it, in the north of Italy, but I decide to don't make any specific time. It's, of course, 
some yeah. between the, 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 the 20s and the 50s probably um, but I want to left like the, like the space uh, yeah the space of feeling. space of illusion is just uh, the go between space I don't know I, I no it's it's not from this side it's from from n neither from this side nor from the other side it was just in the go between space mm -hmm. probably you you can create it's, it's, your idea is much more familiar with just to create feelings in the in the uh, empty land. I don't know. <laughs> oh, in the you, as a physically space yeah, yeah, like yeah, in this. Yeah, 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 probably. I like uh, for in the city. I like the space when they're like no city anymore, yeah, exactly. uh, but no country yet, yeah, or it's, like it's no, no city, country, no country yet, just but in, no. In yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was the space where the circus used to sit, uh, because it, that in those empty fields. So the city gave it that that space. Um, and probably this, uh, I, I don't know if it came in my mind, uh, this is much more familiar with uh, um, another another author, another kind of uh, of person who is Fellini, for oh. example, no? Mm -hmm. So when I, when, um, when I met Fellini, I met Fellini in Cinecittà, in, in, in Cinecittà 5 studio, when he created just a, a, a huge set exactly in in an empty space <laughs> a huge set just to create emotion to create exactly another reality and that's it's much more close with you in an, in another way i don't know I, I can describe that um probably fellini it's one of your it's in your background or not or, or what you're feeling about it i don't know <laughs> yeah probably yes like for i think any italians uh, kind of uh, if you work with your own fantasy Fellini it was so I don't know um, uh, he worked with his fantasies it was fantastic to me so uh, yeah I like his I like his work a lot and Amar Kord is uh, yeah. close with this one I don't know uh, Even not, not La Dolce Vita but probably uh, Amar Kord yeah Amar Kord for sure Satir yes Satir yeah, for it's sure it's like for the like for example the last scene of Amar Kord when it is this wedding on the beach yeah exactly and is it the guy that, that played the accordion yeah and exactly the kids they bother him yeah and yeah they kick the kids yeah and I think it's one of the amazing uh, amazing yeah, yeah. scene and uh, according to this one uh, uh, what do you think have you any any author about literature author about your background you say I don't know Montale or poetry or, oh, uh, or um, maybe more Bassani or Fenoglio Bassan. or um, even a 50s author like uh, yeah well I don't know that, uh, because you you continue you have studied them? Or you no, no. Them? But I think they're very inspiring to me. Yeah. Even yeah. well, the uh, ever this I this one this Roman painter that I, I I recall Antonio Donghi, which is oh. belong to the Scuola Romana, yeah. which I always like uh, his work. And I think it's it's if I need to think about somebody that inspired me, uh, because I think you're inspired for many things that you maybe don't even realize. And maybe one day you're doing something, you'll see something, say, oh. Wow, maybe I was inspired there, um, but uh, then uh, cautiously I was inspired a lot from Antonio Donghi works, yeah. and his it belongs to the r magic realism. Yeah, exactly, and exactly. And he have a he, he, yeah, he was a, he was a, his, his work is incredible, and uh, uh, he used to travel all Italy with this little trolley with all these canvas and colors in the early 20s and going, he, he loved it well so he going in the center of Italy and paint it well by himself in the, I think it was a kind of ideal vacation and he stayed away for three four months just sleep in a, in a, in a country house this was another world that another time you can do that <laughs> but so he was going around with this little trolley and stop paint for an afternoon and then close everything go in and in some in and eat, eat well and then sleep and I mean, it was fantastic <laughs> life and uh, um, an amazing work um, is it is it just your e ideal twin <laughs> <laughs> that is my ideal life actually <laughs> the life, okay <laughs> so. well since um, we're here uh, for the center of the book we thought we w it would be yeah. fun to talk about how we took this work and made it into yeah. the book yeah um and I think that it's neat hearing you talk about the albums because that's a very personal thing. Um, but usually the book is for an audience. Um, 
And this book came out last year, but we were making it even a year in advance. So it was right around the time that the economy was going very, very bad and no one really knew what it meant. Um, and we thought, oh, I think instead of making an inexpensive book, we should try to make a very expensive book because people will be able to, people with money will be able to purchase this. So that for me is a lot of fun because um, it means you can throw a lot of things at the book, make a big size book, um, and really not have to worry so much about expenses. So we knew we were going to print a small number of copies, but make a big book. Um, and I think Paolo and the publisher, my colleague Leslie Martin, had spoken about the book before I even worked for Aperture, and you guys had talked about... Oh, yeah, a year at least. <laughs> yeah. You, know you waited around for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because I, when I start making the work, the Winter Story work, that was something different. And then I realized there was too similar as a feeling to, to war souvenir because I was coming from that work, probably still there. So then I showed Martin in the beginning and she said, maybe you should start to, you should try to change a little bit, make more different from, uh, from war souvenir. So then I, thought about it, it was real so after w one year and then i showed the work again to martin to leslie martin and then she said okay let's let's do the book and then uh, yeah. Denise, well she uh, told me that you all had discussed it and that i was to make a giant horizontal book like as big as i could make it it better look 85 dollars <laughs> and it's got to be horizontal and so these are some early prototypes these are just made on our on our um, laser printer trying out different formats and uh, I don't know if you'd even seen some of these I don't I did not want to make it when she said make it a horizontal book I thought oh I don't want to do that but we tried it and there was something I mean I think there's such a loose narrative um, mm -hmm. to the work that something felt lost in this yeah. format uh, I didn't say yeah. anything to Paolo because I went ahead and tried it but it feels very stiff and when you're making a big horizontal book that much white space or really right. it's it's very active um so thankfully the designer Ingrid Lisa McMillan who was our in-house designer at the time she felt the same way that this was just not going to work so these were some very early prototypes um and we decided we were going to make a big vertical book there you go. um <laughs> And these were some early covers. Also, I don't think I ever showed Paolo these. Um, I was pretty sure from the beginning I wanted to use that image. Take and yeah, I, I'm not even sure I can say why. I just thought, oh, it's very magical. It looks real. Um, but we tried some others. And you can see the type on the, f on the front. It's a Futura type. Um, and it's fine. It's acceptable. But it really felt very generic, like, I could put any work into this design. And so um, the designer and I talked about trying to come up with something that was more whimsical and more in keeping with Paolo's work. And we noticed that in a lot of the pictures it had uh, movie posters. So we decided um, we would try to make it. We also wanted to run the drawings at the back. So we, wa we thought, oh, the work will be like a silent film and the drawings can be, this is before we even knew about the album, the drawings could be like uh, a storyboard. Um, and we watched a lot of silent film and we figured out that in the beginning of silent films there's usually a paragraph stating yeah. what it's about and then there's all these drawings around it. So we thought, oh well, great, Paolo can draw these. <laughs> um, and this is what we put together ourselves. Obviously uh, neither one of us can draw um, and so I was very nervous. I mean, I knew you for a little bit, but not very well at that point. And usually if you're showing a, a photographer the design at the, for the first time, they can, um, they can really be against it. It can be very stressful. So we set up this very formal meeting. Um, Ingerlise and I had talked about what we were going to say, and we were, um, we were very nervous showing this to him. And... Um, how did you... I like it. First of all, he still <laughs> yeah. thought we were doing the horizontal book. I was very nervous, too, because I, <laughs> when it's somebody told me, you told me maybe, oh, it's horizontal, but uh, you will see. 
I was scared. So, no, vertical. And he said, what do you mean vertical? My father was horizontal. <laughs> Why <laughs> did, maybe? So, yeah. And then I like it. I like it. Uh, as a project, well, you didn't like you it know? so much that you want to. You knew you were supposed to. Yeah, but I can see that we can uh, fix it. That things. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah I like uh, the concept. I think, uh, and it's uh, just find something. Uh, you have no explanation. Oh, you like it, you don't. And then it's. I I like it immediately. Uh, I like the concept. I like the idea. And uh, so, and then we start working from there. Well, he went away over the weekend and came back with, I don't know, fifteen or twenty drawings. Yeah. Um, and he did the lettering that opens the book. And these are the final little doodads that went around the paragraph. Um, but it was a really nice process because I think I couldn't have, I had an idea, but I couldn't manifest it. The designer could manifest it, but none of us have any skill in yeah. drawing. And so right, right. I think it took yeah. everybody. Um, and then we really liked, you can see that, you can't see, but the typography is a classic Italian font and the uh, captions and folios are up at the top. So it's just a little bit echoing the high yeah. wire and very um, much in keeping with the work and things can move back and forth and different sizes without it feeling too, um, too static. So the book moves in a different way. I feel like that help the work um, and made it for an audience, a really specific audience. And then in the back, um, we have the drawings, which mm -hmm. have a different treatment mm -hmm. and they're on a different stock because we didn't different want to- paper also. Yeah. And then, um, of course, Verna and I had been working on the, this album book, so I had loads of pictures of albums from the Library of Congress, and Paolo was also in the office at the same time looking, uh, oh, what is this, a uh, Lenny Riefenstahl? And well, I, I'm really curious. And then out of nowhere, he says, oh, I have albums. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it, that's the going with the drawing, you know. For me, the, the work was the photographs. I never thought about anything about the drawing and the part of well, the Polar Albums was just really made by myself, my, my fun, and, uh, uh, and the keep of the Polar all together. Um, and the drawing was just something that I needed for making the, Im the, the photograph. And then you can even throw away it because they were not uh, in, really important. Um, it's, you know, it's, well, it's an important part of the process. Yeah, yeah. really, really. Yeah. Yeah, so every, every time it seemed like I saw Paolo, he would come in with something new, uh, either a shoebox of <laughs> Polaroids, family pictures, a, an album, drawing, you know, it was like, I still <laughs> never know. How um, many? Yeah, like, what's next? Yeah. What are you going to have? <laughs> um, so this is a little bit about how we um, made the book. Um, and I think... I, it was one of my favorite books to work on, and I think it shows in the in the book. You could tell we have we had fun. Yeah, it was a long work. I mean, uh, it's, yeah. uh, but it's. I think it's, it's it was good. It looked great. I mean. Um. <laughs> oh, that's we wanted to show some things from Paolo's family. Yeah, that was the costume that my father made for us for carnival. Uh, I'm the Roman one. I'm the left, and my twin is on the right. Is a uh, is a. Uh, um, <laughs> Soldier of Fortune from the Sforza family. And uh, I remember seeing for my brother cry because he didn't want to wear that ridiculous <laughs> hat in his head. <laughs> but my father insists that it was the appropriate hat for that <laughs> costume. And uh, <laughs> so I was very proud of my costume. And my father spent weeks for make the costume. And, uh, and they were accurate, historically accurate. Yeah. That's what he told us. <laughs> Um, so my poor brother is to wear yeah, a sure. pizza on his flower. <laughs> uh, and that's What's the thing. What's going on here? Uh, here, uh, that's when we were um, 12 years old. And uh, I want to recreate, I want to make the uh, Robert Kappa photographs. And uh, <laughs> so I convinced my brother to enter in this pound and do the like, oh. uh, <laughs> and then I have uh, this Rolleiflex and then my father gave it to me when I was 10 and taking this picture. Um, that's how we spend this summer in, <laughs> <Yeah>. in <the laughs> funny way <laughs> yeah 
I think you made a lot of your family play dead. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh my yeah, that's in my aunt. That was my bar, my father's sister, and she was Spain because she never get married. So and she was old, so she spent summer with us. Yeah. And uh, so we, me and my twin, we used to have a f her funeral, which is was <laughs> make. <laughs> We dress her like she was dead, and it's my parents have a discussa punk, which is all furniture like this, you, and you open like this, like a coffin, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you put her inside, and then put a like, talc on her face, and then make a funeral, a speech, etc., and then close the casa panca. And always she said, don't close the casa panca. <laughs> yeah, please. I, of course, was going to finish, close the casa panca. And, uh, but I think she's in, I was, yeah. All right, what's happening here on the right? Oh, room. I was a. Uh, uh, I want to be like this. I would stay on the f on the floor level, at the ground level, yeah. so in my face. Yeah. But be <laughs> vertical. <And> so, <laughs> so you we a make we hole. dig a hole, yeah, and yeah. then I you went inside, and my brother covered me up, and then left me there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. What about your your brother now? And <laughs> we are really curious about your brother. Oh, what it's, you okay. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's a painter. Okay, great. <laughs> so all the family is addicted yeah. to art. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Well, I thought it might be nice if you talked about what you're working on now. Yeah. Okay, that's the... the oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait. No, oh this is just... Uh, part of Paolo's collection. Yeah. This is one great. of the things he brought in one day to the office. Just I think they are beautiful images. They found a flea markets and they're just people. That was the idea, you know, the thing that they, yeah, they tried yeah, exactly. to remake. That was exactly, there was a moon, there was an airplane, there was yeah. a the Zeppelin sometime. Yeah, right. uh, unfortunately, they all disappear yeah. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, right? Okay, here we are. Well, this is my last work, and uh, it's, the, it's the title of the work, the Automaton, and there's a set in Venice during the, um, the 40s, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very small work, it's a very small project, and they just finished it, uh, it's just only 30 images, um, and it's a little, it's a little short story, very simple short story, um, so the images have a sequence. Uh, and there's a little text for each image, the kind of uh, caption for the tell the story. And the story and the story of this old man is an old Jewish man living in the ghetto of Venice. And uh, he's uh, during the German occupation of the, of the city. And he, have, uh, he was a, a watch, uh, uh, he, a former watchmaker, watch repair. And he's alone and, uh, in the ghetto during that time. He's... Uh, this is near behind his house, and then he's, he's, he's alone as he was alone. I was alone in Venice during the, the terrible years. And he, at one point, because uh, he wanted to have a company, he decided to build uh, an automaton, um, yeah. which is, this is the his studio while he's built the automaton. And the automaton, uh, uh, and then he's finished the automaton, and uh, it's called the automaton Nino. And what Nino doing is just toast for a lunch, a dinner with him when he's sitting at the table, and they were, eh, exactly, that's Nino on the left. And they, they toast him for lunch and for dinner, so he felt less lonely in his, um, in his life. Uh, he got very attached to Nino, and at one point in the night, in the afternoon actually of the, uh, December 8, 1943, the German, which has left the Jewish live in the ghetto for a while, um, well, of course, the most of the Jewish already f left because they understand they were dangerous. So, but the, the old people and the people that know where to go, they just there. They were still there. So the German, through the uh, fascist police, decide to to take everybody out from the ghetto and send it to the to the to Germany. Um, so he's in his uh, in his house having almost dinner with his with Nino, and the police arrive and they start to take everybody out of the apartment. So he don't know what to do it because it's all this, and he have his, his automaton. So he takes his automaton, he hugs his automaton, and there's a uh, niche behind the bookstore, bookshelf. He go behind there and wait. The, the, the police arrive, and he's a part of it, the list of the Jews give from the Italian government to go to get it. And he started looking for him. But it's also dinner time. So the, the, um, the, the automaton is ready to make the toast and say <laughs> salute a te very loudly. So the guy is uh, hugging the, the automaton. He understands it's the end of his life because there was no way that he cannot be caught. Yeah. And the automaton, he raises his arm and starts to move all the other things around the, the, the body because he built him, so he know how they work. And then he, when he was ready to say salute a te, he didn't say anything. He put the, the arms down and the police finished to... Um, 
to looking for him. He left the apartment. It's uh, almost night. It's uh, in the early in the morning. He take the automaton. He take a blanket around and uh, go out and through the automaton to the canal in, Ven in the, one of the canal. And that's the story. Coming back to <laughs> coming back from <laughs> so sad so. the end. <laughs> at the end and coming so, back from but is your that story from your family stories or no 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 yeah. nothing to do I I used the I used the, some period of 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 history of Italy like the war of after the war or just before the war but for me it's just set where I can set my story so it, it, they're always in the background um, it's just an um, Okay, we're being told we're off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not off, uh, what's that lesson in creativity for all of us? But we need a little time uh, for not only the book signing, but for you to look at the display and to uh, kind of feast in this lesson of creativity that we've all had. Uh, Paolo and Denise and Renato, it's really been quite a wonderful experience for each of us. And I'd like everyone to give you a hand, and then I'm going to say one more word. Thank you so much. Thank you. One thought that uh, I've had, uh, thinking with Verna a little bit about the generosity of all of the people here to the Library of Congress and the fact that not only have you've given us a second album, yep. but I'm thinking of you know the background, and did I understand you to say that your father was an illustrator of yeah, children's yeah, books, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. And Denise has talked about the making of the book, uh, so I think we've tied many, many different things together here, but I want everyone to have a chance to have a personal conversation uh, with Paolo and uh, for us to uh, have a chance to take a look at this wonderful book. So thank you all for coming, and we will see you outside at the display of the new material and also to take a good look at the book. Please, one more round of applause for our guests. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.